Tonight I'm taking out cells from the cell builder. So I wanted to share with you what I do and how I harvest those cells that are started and put them in the finishes. So here was my cell bar that's just been in the finisher. Okay, I've just left that on top. And quite often um, I do actually keep my cells on top of the bees to keep them warm. But tonight it's a lovely warm night. Okay, so I've taken them out of the cell bar and I've put them next to the adjacent colony so I can sort these out. And you can see what's been accepted and what hasn't. So we've got quite a good acceptance. I wasn't expecting to get many accepted this time. The reason being because there's no flow on. I've got a pollen patty on here, as you can see, that they have been devouring quite well. Um, we were getting low on nectar. I did top up the feeder yesterday, but it was empty when I came down this morning. And this is the fourth time this has run, okay? And this builder is not the strongest one I've ever had. What I do now is I take off the accepted cells and the non-accepted cells, and then I gap them up. So I'll probably end up with at least three bars full of accepted cells. And then I'll put them onto my finishes, which are out and about around here. So we'll do that now. But I haven't got my tripod with me because it's up at the house so I'm, and I wasn't expecting to film tonight because, but now the sun's suddenly come out and I've got to get this done because I'm getting another one graft, last graft in here and when these cells are in the finishes but they don't look much now but they're all accepted except a few and I'll sort them out and then you can see what is good and what isn't but at least you'll have an idea of the amount of acceptance you get but you usually get better than this so I'm just showing you the reality of it and this is the fourth cycle so it's done pretty well There we are. This is uh, better than I thought. It's not too bad. We've got 75% um, take and I could have grafted less and probably got more. And the other thing I could have done was taken the cells out, cells out earlier today. Don't forget the minute they jump on those cells, they, they start them all and then they start to reduce the number when they realize uh, they've got so many. So if you leave them in for six hours, often that's enough to get them started but it's up to you to work that out for your bees and your area because at the moment we have a severe pollen dearth and we've got no pollen really coming in through the door so we're really struggling um, but I've got pollen sub on I've rubbed a bit into some frames some pollen sub I haven't got I'm really I've got a pollen frame I found from a colony but it wasn't a complete frame and when there's when there's that feeling there isn't much coming through the door the bees are reluctant to make many queen cells. So you've really got to push them and you've got to have everything so strong. This cell builder isn't bad, but it's not as strong as I'd want it. But it's still packed full of nurse bees. This there was the colony um, I took the bees from. Uh, and then as we, we did in my previous video. So at least I'll show you now these going into a finisher. So this is actually one of my finishers next door. There's a queen excluder here, five of high, but this one had grafts in from three days ago. So they'll be nearly, nearly ready now. They'll be capped over in two days. But everyone, I work, I work away from myself as I go around the apiary and I'll be going to finishes now. I've got one over that way and I'll start on the other side now over there. So um, they're all working by date. And I know that when in my last graft will be this afternoon and that will go in in a minute. When I go up the house with my breeder queen uh, frame, then I'll come back and put that in this evening and that'll be it. I'll leave those in to finish and I'll reunite the colony with that one. Um, after five days and that will be the end of that finish because this has been running for five days already and I don't like to leave it any longer but if I get another 20 cells tomorrow happy days that's all I need so and then I'll, I'll stock another cell builder tomorrow or the day after for, for, for next week because I'm constantly needing cells because I've got a load of mating newts here this year and they're going to be harvested soon so these cells here that I'm banking in a minute there's 45 cells there they're, they're being banked so they're 45 queens uh, virgin queens that are going to be banked and they're going to be uh, ready to use next week. So I've got plenty of resources now coming online. I've got all these queen cells that are in the finishers, as from tonight and yesterday and the day before, as well as all those that are actually emerged virgins that are living and, and they've got uh, two or three nurse bees in each cage and they should stay, away, away, um, should stay alive and viable for two or three days more while I harvest my other load of um, um, uh, mated queens. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm now going to put some of these in the finishes. This is one of my nice strong finishes with plenty of bees in the top sections. Now what I've done here is I've actually rearranged the brood 
a couple of days ago so that there's open brood in the top frame. Don't forget, a finisher has a live has live brood in it and has live larvae that need feeding. Obviously, the brood doesn't need feeding, that's cat. What I'm trying to say is it's a different thing. It's just a finisher. And really, the bees see queen cells as much as they probably know, and I'm not sure, I couldn't tell you for sure, as much as they probably know it's actually uh, a cell, they don't see it perhaps the same as queen cells. They just finish the cells that are there. And if you put a queen cell in the right place, it's just like them naturally making super procedure cells in the top of the colony in, in midsummer. They think that they've been put there for a reason and they just finish them. So along comes me. I've got my exclu queen excluder here. I've got my five frames over five frames. There's no queen in this top box, okay? She can't tear, tear down the cells and the bees up here have none of her pheromone and they think that she has put them there or she's permitted them to be there. So they just finish them. But you need some open brood because you want to have, you wanna have the, the nurse bees that are feeding larvae right next to your queen cells. So if you organize that and do that, you end up with a really good scenario where you've got a colony that's working. You can use this as a brood factory. You can use this to make honey if you want to, as well as finish cells, as long as it's strong and as long as it's doing the business, it's foraging well. And this colony is foraging well. So I'm just gonna smoke these off a bit. I'm gonna part these two frames and I know where I wanna put my cells because I wanna put my cells where I put the frame of open brood in the other day. So all I've done is basically taken a frame from the bottom and put it in the top and put an empty frame from the top back in the bottom. The problem comes in managing these little colonies of 10 frames because they get very strong very quickly, but it's better to have that than not. All you do is come along and make a nuke from one of them. So you're not taking away the foraging bees, you're just taking away most of the, well, some of the nurse bees. And that's the best way. It keeps on top of it and it stops it from swarming because you're using it as like a little brood factory. So you can use all these. It's, it's just the same as having a normal hive like these. That's 10 frames, that's 10 frames. This is 10 frames, but all you're doing is compartmentalizing it where you, you put that queen excluder in and the queen can't get up, therefore it becomes a finisher if you want it to. You're just using it to your advantage. It's dead simple. So in go my started cells, okay? So I'm using a bit of smoke. They're a bit nancy tonight anyway, these cells. So I'm gonna push the frames up together as well because what it, what it does is having this little bar on the top does actually mean you've got a bit more time and you can be a bit more relaxed the way you handle your bees when you're putting the, if you've got some bees that aren't quite so good, that aren't quite so, um, how can you say, complying. It's got stung on the finger there. These really are not happy tonight, I don't know why. But anyway, that'll have to do. I've got hardly any smoke in my smoker. So that's kind of what I do. Then they get left now, mark the dates mark, and I leave them for um, the five to six days. I prefer to leave them for the seven, eight days until they're capped over in, on day five. And I prefer to leave them longer because the problem is I found I get more, um, deaths of cells, uh, larvae in the cells when I try and move them on day six and day seven. If you leave them to day eight and nine, then those larvae are really well capped over and the larvae are finished eating. They're virtually starting to pupate. And then on day 10, 11, you can get them out the, out the finisher if you want to. If you, the trouble that I usually have is I run out of space. So I'm juggling all these ones and I've got other ones over here behind there you can see. I'm juggling all of these, trying to basically get the cells in for the longest amount of time, but with the least amount of disturbance of the cells, and that's the key to it. But often I, I open up the other side here and I'll put another set in, because don't forget, these have been finished. So um, these bees have really got a temper, this colony. Um, so these have been finished. Those first set, for instance, will be finished, and this, this next set will carry on. They're, they're only the next 14 cells. The other thing I was going to mention is I'm only putting 14, and because there's no flow on at the moment, on this particular case, I'm just putting 14 cells in because that's really a, real, a realistic amount of bees, amount of um, cells I'd want them to draw up that are gonna be good and full of royal jelly. If I put more in, I'm thinking, are they gonna be packed full of royal jelly to the max? So you've got to think of that on those sort of terms, you know? I had some old honey in here. I was giving them back to them from our um, wax melting. We sometimes have, so you can see they really go mad in that feeder and those cells will be full of nurse bees straight away. So that one is, for instance, done, and they'll be drawing up those cells straight away now, so that's great. So that's my started cells, another row of 14 in there, another row of 14 in there, you see? So this is, there's three rows of 14, which you saw before, and they're in individual finishes with a queen excluder between the two. You can see I run out of pre-cut queen excluders, so I've just whacked one between the two there. That's what I do prefer, because it's less in the way. 
but uh, there we are that's that's these finishes all full now again so I've got how many more I've got one two over that way another two three finishes left in this area that I can use to finish cells so when I harvest tomorrow's that will be it then the cell builder will then use just for banking those coins but uh, that's what I do when I put my when I put my cells in finishes a couple of things I wanted to discuss as well when with my finishes is you need to go in and sort that brood out so you bring brood from the bottom to the top and that's open brood a bit of open brood will attract more nurse bees in that area so they'll be feeding your cells better probably with a with a colony that's very busy very busy anyway it's arguable whether it makes a lot of difference but i think it does you know um in the top if if you imagine the top of a honey above an excluder most of the time that's used for storing as honey so um logically most nurse bees will be down the bottom but if you do move brood up there that's when they're going to finish those cells properly the other thing uh i've talked about a little bit before is the reason why i tend to um harvest my cells on day two in other words i graft one day and harvest them the next to get them started is because personally i now have a lot of little mating nukes in this yard as well and i am worried if for instance a stray virgin gets in now if a stray virgin gets in you might lose your cells but the other thing is if i lose them i'll know about it on day two Whereas if you just don't do anything and you reassemble your colony after day four or five when they're capped over, then you would discover. So you've lost five days of production. Is that really what you want to do? I don't think it's sensible because I can't afford to have gaps in my production. I've only got another two months at the very most of queen rearing this year. Uh, but come, come the second week of July and we're finished, to be honest. So we've got six weeks, six, seven weeks now. We're going hell for leather to do as many as we can to bank as many as we can. So I'm hoping um, we'll be able to inseminate some queens later in the summer. So I've got to get organized, get as many as I can, as many raids as possible and as many nukes made because our flow is coming. And that flow, if I can get as many colonies made before that, they'll fill out for free. I won't have to feed them. And that's the key to it. It's push, 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 you know? So another thing I wanted to show you was, uh, these are our mini plus frames, our mini plus mini nukes. Obviously they're quite common. A lot of people use them for queen rearing. And uh, just around here, I've got a, you might've seen some of the pictures. I've got a nice bank of them um, that I'm using to make a lot of my queens this year. So there's like 50 here, there's another 10 over there and there are various ones dotted around, but this is my main bank of them. But how I produce these in the spring is I break them down from overwintered queens that, that, that then build up in that spring. So obviously I've broken this down. I took some off of it. I took some bees from it and some frames and made those nukes around the corner. But now they're building back up again and the flow's coming. So I know that, for instance, a couple of them will have swarmed because you just can't be on top of them all the time. But this one, for instance, swarmed or changed queen. I'm not sure, I can't remember. Whatever happened, there was a new queen in there. There was no brew, but that's building up now. So that's going to be left alone. That will fill up on its own. But this one didn't swarm and I've harvested brew from it. I've harvested uh, nukes, you know, frames from it to make a colony from it, several colonies. And then what happened was it got, I finished in the spring flow, let it build up again. Now it's so strong that it needed more bodies, but I haven't got the bodies. Well, I have, but I don't want to use my resources to go up again. So what I do instead is I put it on top of a nuke. And what, what happens then is you um, force the bees to go down. So I put that on top of a, a nuke and this is a six frame nuke. The bees then have to go through and down and use the front entrance and because they get so strong and because I knew there was like five, six frames of brood were hatching at the same time, I knew that that colony was gonna get really strong. So I gave, so I've made provisions for it. And what I can do now is if I need to make more nukes up, I can do that. And then as I take bees off the top, the queen will probably go down or if I find the queen, I'll put her in the bottom and that's a nuke made. If I want to harvest that queen, I can, then I could break it all down and give them both a new queen. So it gives you the option to make a lot of colonies quickly. So, and as well as hoping stopping swarming because swarming in the majority of cases in, in, our, in our world is because of congestion and it's just not having the time to manage that congestion. Okay, queens get old, but most of the time we, we, we either get rid of queens, we sell them or we put them out into the, the production apiaries. So we don't have actually queens that get old here. Most of the time they are queens that are just basically congested and that's why they swarm. So by doing this, you, you're using your resources wisely. You're putting yourself, you're leaving that nuke 
to build up for, for when our flow starts in three weeks, it'll be chaos. There'll be just so much bees, so much nectar coming in that they'll need space. And if you do that space now while you've got chance, it's brilliant because the bees know where it is and they just fall, they just fill it up. There'll be six frames of bees and brood there in, in no time. And then I can just break that all down if I want and make some more nukes. It's, it's all about doing that. It's all about knowing what you've got and trying to use it. This is just a simple piece of cardboard with, with a hole cut in the bottom because it's the summer, it hasn't got to be, be there for long. You can see the bees are packed full of bees already underneath, filling those frames out. So it's, it works really well. They've even been propolizing up. Sometimes I do take these down, but because I've gone to the six frame for these and not the five frame, the six frame actually fit better um, underneath the mini nukes here because there was, used to, there was actually a little gap before. When you use a five frame nuke, it was a little gap each side. Now, even if you cut the cardboard, the cardboard bend, bent a bit down and it wasn't fitting properly, but with a six frame, it's perfect. So we've got um, six frames by three, that's 18 frames in there, and then they get the 10, then they get six frames of dad on, which is considerably more volume for those bees to have. So it works really well. It gives you that breathing space when you're doing other things in the summer. Because that we, we know the, the spring is gone now. There's nothing, there's nothing in flower. You can look around here. The apple trees are finished. The hawthorn's finished. Everything is like absolutely barren. All we've got coming out soon is the chestnut trees and the bramble, which is not actually here. I've got some in the garden, some chestnut, but the bramble will be out and that's basically going to be it. And then within, within a month, it's all, well, maybe five weeks, it'll all be finished. But what you want to have by then, but the end of those five weeks, what you want to have is your colonies as full of honey as you can, but managed. And that's the key to it so that they're not swarming. But we generally don't get much swarming this time of the year. Thankfully, our swarming is mostly in the spring and we had a fair bit this year, but everybody did this year. Everybody had loads of loads and loads of swarming no matter who you were no matter what you did no matter how you sorted your bees out unless you put enormous resources into controlling your bees and managing them piece by piece you had swarming so i'll be giving all these hives space right now they've got a super on and the supers are virtually empty which is great so that gives me the the time when the flow starts but there's food underneath in the colony i've got to check for food because if you take a, a nuke if you make us make a swarm we call it or if you make a nuke up after the end of the first flow you have to be sure the bees have got plenty to survive on that's what it's all about it's all about realizing the bees potential under the current conditions at the moment you are really having to look after your bees because there is no pollen hardly any pollen there's a bit there's some coming in but it's they are literally using the pollen up as fast as they bring it in the door and some of my queens have slowed right down i've got some breeder queens that like are exceptional and now they've actually stopped and some of them have got super seeder cells in because the bees think there's something wrong with the queen but I fed them and things are quietened down. They've not binned out the drones, which is great. While we're here, I just thought I'd share with you these beautiful rose bushes we've got. We've got some shrub roses here just behind my nukes. And these some David Austin we bought years ago as a shrub. They're absolutely glorious. Aren't they wonderful? And whatever you're doing, enjoy your bees. Catch you again soon. Bye for now.